What's going on, everybody? My name is Jeremiah. And this is Ashley. And you are listening to the Hill Shadows Podcast, and we are your hosts for this evening. And firstly, I want to say, if you're into the paranormal, the unknown, supernatural, then please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our uploads. And we got a lot to talk about today. There's been a lot going on as far as uh, cryptids go this week and the unknown. As, uh, for uh, I think CERN did some uh, like revolutionary testing this week, correct? Yeah. I find that fascinating. So they were, from what I understand, they were smashing particles together down to a level that's never been done before with an energy that has never been used at such a high level, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. So who knows what they're doing there at CERN. They could be opening portals. They could have opened portals years ago. Um, I don't know what kind of conspiracy theories are going on around this or anything. Well, when it first happened, uh, when I think maybe in 2010, there was... That's when, like, the whole Mandela effect thing kind of started. Right, right. Yeah, I find that pretty fascinating. Yeah. But, yeah, um, so Siren's doing some crazy stuff. So if you guys don't know about that, you might want to check that out. And another thing that I wanted to bring up that I think this just happened yesterday, I'm pretty sure you told me about it, it was uh, Coyote Peterson had yeah. found a skull, which he claims... He did not claim it was anything. He did Okay, well, evidently he did not. I don't, I, I'm not going to say that. Then He did not do that. But I think some people want to speculate that it could possibly be the skull of a Sasquatch. I would Is that right? absolutely love if it was. But I mean, that's fascinating. It could be... Uh, it's not, though. I mean... It looks very much like... The thing like is, we, we did look, look up the, images yeah. of gorilla skulls. Uh-huh. And they looked very similar to the skull in the picture. But yeah. he Just found. He said he found it in British Columbia, correct? Yeah. They're not supposed to be mountain gorillas there. No. So, uh, either he brought that in there and it's a, a hoax all around. Trying or to get famous. Maybe some gorilla escaped a zoo or something. Maybe. And got in the wild and it's just been out there for a while. Or, or maybe it is a Sasquatch. Another thing, it, like, he was talking about how he smuggled it in through TSA and whatever, you know. Right. Why would he admit to committing, like, a crime like that? That's a he, good point. I mean... That's not very smart. So, so he fair. found it there and he brought it with him. I don't know. Is that what? Well, I mean, you can buy a. Um, yeah, I've seen that. It's skull not really that much. Cheap. Yeah. It's like three hundred so bucks. It'd be super easy to <laughs> fake it. Yeah, it's like three hundred bucks. So, but I mean, on the other side of the coin. You it would got, be really cool if it was real, though. You got the discovery of a cryptid that, you know, and it's got a lot of people talking, man. The Bigfoot community is going crazy over it, right? I mean, from well, what I can tell. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've in seen social it. media, it seems I've seen like it a lot, a lot of people have Bigfoot shared talks. the thing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going around right now. I it's mean, because it really would be cool. It like, would be. I would, it would be. love if it was, like, real. I think wrong, even, but, uh, even... Dr. Uh, Meldrum. Meldrum commented. He right, did. And he said, said it is that a fact. It was a gorilla it skull. It is a gorilla, without sure. a doubt. That's what he said. But but then again, no one has a Sasquatch skull, so you cannot say for certain. Like, right. Like I said, there is there isn't any canine teeth on the skull, so either it I don't know. It doesn't. It is something different that you know doesn't have any canines or. It had canines and maybe they were grinded down. Right. Or if it's a replica, it could have been made without. You know, he could have had someone yeah, actually absolutely. make it. Yeah. Fairly easy. I mean, if if in fact it is something interesting, I'm sure he will have it tested by the proper people. And, yeah. you know, they'll be able to tell. Yeah, so, he talked it up, though, on his post. Well, he, he may be on to something. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I certainly hope he is. I'd like to see it yeah. happen for for the entire community. I mean, I think it would be cool. I personally, you know, I want to believe that it's so, something. I've never seen it, but I think there's enough evidence that supports its existence, mm-hmm. for sure. 
He's supposed to be, what's he say, releasing it on Brave Wilderness this weekend. Well, I can't wait to see that. Yeah. When and, is it? Um, I'm not sure when his show comes on on weekends. Speaking of cryptids, another thing we want to get into tonight uh, to talk about just a little bit is the Mothman. That's something we wanted to cover. We haven't gotten to talk about. There's not a whole lot of information out about it, but it what mm -hmm. what's out is pretty interesting. I, I think. it is until you well keep going. It, Do you want to mm -hmm. uh, introduce and talk about what what happened in Ple Point Pleasant? Or do you want me to take um, it off? Or take what? it. All right. Well, what what I'm what I got here is in West Virginia folklore. The Mothman is a humanoid creature reportedly seen in the Point Pleasant area, and this this was in November fifteenth, nineteen sixty six to December fifteenth, sixty seven. Mm -hmm. The first newspaper report <clears throat> was published in the Point Pleasant Register, dated November sixteenth, nineteen sixty six titled Couple C Man Size Bird Creature Something. The national the national press soon picked up the reports and helped spread the story across the US. The Mothman was introduced to a wider audience in nineteen seventy and was later popularized by John Kill in his nineteen seventy five mm -hmm. book The Mothman Prophecies. Mm -hmm. And that was also a film starring Richard Gere. Yeah. Really good film. It is really, really good. Really good. Mm -hmm. And uh to get into the history of what happened on November 15th, 1966, there were two young couples from Point Pleasant, Roger and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Mary Mallet, and they told police they saw a large gray creature whose eyes glowed red when the car's headlights picked it up. They described it as a large flying man with 10-foot wings following their car while they were driving in an area outside of town known as the TNT area the site of a former World War II uh, munitions plant. And during the next few days, other people reported similar sightings. Two volunteer firemen who saw it said it was a large bird with red eyes. Mason County Sheriff George Johnson commented that he believed the sightings were due to an unusually large heron he termed a sh 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 shit shite poke. See. I don't know how to say that. Shite, shite poke. Shitty poke? <laughs> I don't know. I really don't. But contractor Newell Partridge told Johnson that when he aimed a flashlight at the creature in a nearby field, its eyes glowed like bicycle reflectors. Additionally, he blamed buzzing noises from his television set and the disappearance of his German Shepherd dog on the creature. Wildlife biologist Robert Smith at West Virginia University told reporters that descriptions and sightings all fit the Sandhill Crane, a large American crane almost as tall as a man with a seven-foot wingspan featuring circles of reddish coloring around the eyes. The bird may have wandered out of its migration route and therefore was unrecognized at first because it was not native to, his re to this region. And due to the popularity of the Batman TV series at the time, the fictional superhero Batman and his rogues gallery were prominently featured in the public eye. While the villain Killer Moth did not appear in the show, the comic book influence of both him and Batman is believed by some to have influenced the coinage of the name Mothman in the lo local newspapers. Let's see, following... The December 15, 1967 collapse of the Silver Bridge and the death of 46 people. And I find this part a little fascinating. The incident gave rise to the legend and connected the Mothman sightings to the bridge collapse. According to the Georgian newspaper, a Russian ufologist claimed that Mothman sightings in Moscow foreshadowed the 1999 Russian apartment bombings. Mm -hmm. So... This thing supposedly pops up when mm -hmm. something bad is getting ready right. to happen. It's it's like a bad omen. So when you see it, supposedly something like I very, believe like, you mentioned that is gonna happen. it may have been seen before the events during 9/11. 9/11 Chernobyl. Uh, Chernobyl. Um, I mean, and what I my response to that was these days this guy must just be flying circles around the world. <laughs> like, just look up, you're gonna see him somewhere because uh. You know, there's crazy stuff happening all the time. But I, f I find it fascinating, especially if you get into the book and stuff, because uh, 
you get into a lot of of paranormal stuff yeah, when it UFOlogy. comes to this case. Yeah, it has a lot to do with UFOs and uh. What uh, sucks is that um. I was reading uh, what's dude's name that wrote it? Uh, John Kit. Yeah, Kit. Um, so supposedly he made all of it up. Um, he was a. He got into all of it like UF, UFOs, um, paranormal, everything for the money. And made up everything. The Indrid, what's his name? Indrid Cole, Cold, Ingrid. What was the name? Indrid. Indrid Cole. Indrid Cole. Yeah. yeah. Um, all of that was like made up. For is the that book. is that what he said? Um, let me see if I can find where. That's where pretty he crazy. Says. Yeah. I'm gonna look at the Mothman prophecies and see, you know. So yeah, basically, it's it's the the book relates Kill's accounts of his investigation into alleged sightings of a large winged creature called Mothman in the vicinity of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. So oh, okay. it combines these accounts with his, his theories about UFOs and various supernatural phenomena, ultimately connecting them to the collapse of the Silver Bridge across the Ohio River. Official investigations determined it was caused by stress, corrosion, cracking, and an eye bar in a suspension chain. Of course it was. That doesn't mean it wasn't prophesied to happen, right? right? So, um, let's see. It seems in the May-June 2002 issue of Skeptical Inquirer, journalist John Sherwood, a former business associate of UFO researcher Gary Barker, published an analysis of mm -hmm. private letters between Kill and Barker during the period okay, of Kill's right. investigation. So, after Bark's, Barker's death in 1984, they said several former ufologists, most notably James Mosley and John C. Sherwood, came forward claiming that Barker was a serial hoaxer who didn't even believe in UFOs. In the 1995 documentary Whispers from Space, Barker's sister claimed that her brother only got involved in ufology because of the money. I mean, you know, there is a lot of, I think a lot of people, I don't think, I want to say a lot of people, but, you know, there are definitely people that do. Because, uh -huh. honestly, the people that do fake stuff, it gets attention. Because yeah. everything we watch, you don't know for, you don't know for sure if it's fake or not. I think not. people have a desire for these things, like, and for all the cryptids to be real. It's fascinating. Right, and I think it's some unknown. people, I think, I think I even heard one person say that if I did fake it, it would be because of the importance of this issue. And right. I think... The importance of the discovery. To me, that says okay. that he already did because it is that important to him. But for me, I would never do anything like that. I mean, it's... No. I don't know. I, mean, I think, I think it's <laughs> enough, there's enough crazy stuff that happens, you really don't need to fake it. But people will do that, for you know, for monetary reasons, um, usually monetary. So, I want to go over a few things, and I, I hope this doesn't get really long or anything. I want to kind of get to the point where it's like Andrew Cold and stuff. He's not a real person. Right, but it was the but plot. But the story like, is really cool. The story. It's <laughs> yeah. a cool story, right? Yeah. It's a really cool story. So, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, let me just go over. I'll go over the whole plot, right? So, Washington Post col columnist John Klein and his wife Mary are involved in a car accident when Mary swerves to avoid a huge flying black figure. This being the Mothman, clearly. John survives the crash unscathed, but Mary is hospitalized. There she is diagnosed with an unrelated brain tumor and shortly thereafter passes away. John discovers her sketchbook of terrifying drawings of a moth-like creature with red eyes she drew over and over while hospitalized. Already, I'm loving the plot. Two years later, John becomes lost in West Virginia and inexplicably finds himself in Point Pleasant. What do you know? Hundreds of miles is off this his the route. Plot? Yeah, it is. Driving in the middle of the night, his car breaks down, and he walks to a nearby house to get help. The owner, Gordon Smallwood, reacts violently to John's appearance and holds him at gunpoint. Local police offer Connie Mills, office, I'm sorry, local police officer Connie Mills defuses the situation while Gordon explains that this is the third consecutive night John has knocked on his door at 2.30 a.m. asking to use the phone. 
Connie and John try to make sense of these events. John stays at a local motel and ponders how he ended up so far from his original destination. Officer Mills discloses to John that many strange things have been occurring in the past few weeks and that people have reported seeing a large winged creature like a giant moth with red eyes. She also tells him about a strange dream she had in which the words wake up number 37 were spoken to her. During a conversation with Gordon, he reveals to John that he has heard voices coming from his sink telling him that in Denver, 99 will die. While discussing the day's event at a local diner, John notices that, he, that the news is showing the story of an airplane crash in Denver that killed all 99 passengers aboard. The next night, Gordon frantically explains that the voices in his head emanate from a being named Indrid Cole. Later on, Gordon calls John and says that he is standing next to Andrew Cole. While John keeps Cole on the line, Officer Mills checks on Gordon. Cole gives John details about his life that only he knows, and John tests Cole with questions that only he could know if he were in the same room with him. John is convinced that Cole is a supernatural being. So that's that's more or less the plot of the movie. You know, I don't want to go on because this, this could go on forever. Yeah, right. so, oh, yeah, it's, probably it anyway. yeah it's, it's a but good movie. If you years. haven't seen it, check it out. It's cool. But, yeah, so, so I think the author of this book was basically saying that all this really happened to him. Is this, is yeah. this right? Mm -hmm. Was he proven wrong? No. 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 Um, just after he passed away was so, when he thinks that it was fake. So, did in fact 99 people die in a plane crash in Denver? Is that... I don't... Is that factual? I don't know. Let me look that up. Because if so, that's interesting, Let's right? See. I mean, it does talk about, you know, the uh, the, the tragedy on what the year? Ohio River, you know? Did it say what year? The movie or... The 99 what? people. No, it does not say what year, but... I mean, the the bridge happened in, what, 67? So I would imagine it would be around that time. But, I mean, that's pretty wild. I don't know. I, I mean, I think it's possible that there could be some type, type of cryptid that maybe is a trans-dimensional being and... And perhaps can can see in our time in a way that we can't see right. in our time, and maybe time is not the same for them, and they can no. Because I I don't know why, but but I I believe that everything is like I don't even know how to explain it. Like written, everything has already been. You it's know what I mean? Like it's said, already like, yeah. Everything is already happening happen, right now. There's no preventing it. Like. Just because he told people about the bridge don't mean there's anything anybody can do to stop right, the collapse. Right, because it's, it's already done. It's in already time. happened. Like, We're just in it, living. You know what I mean? Like it happened. Then you got the question of why would this thing tell people, knowing there's nothing you can. I mean, it's kind of like toying with with humanity a little bit, right? Like I'm gonna give you this information. But only just this little bit? <laughs> just this little bit, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, it's just what it is. I just thought you should know. Maybe you know there are I'm other doing. little things that we don't see, though, that tell us a lot more. We're just not. Right, I mean, clearly, if there are things that can see things in that sense, then there are a lot of things we're missing that is going well, on we right talk around about, like, us. Time right? travel next time. I mean, time travel <laughs> or uh, possibly people disappearing into portals because there are places where uh, they say time moves slower in certain yeah. areas. Like, Not much, but it, right, it uh, does. Enough like to maybe say a second that it moves slower, yeah. But it does move slower, yeah. Yeah, actually, That's the place that it does it at, there used to be a tribe there. I can't remember what they're called, but um, they disappeared. The whole tribe just disappeared without a trace whatsoever. And I've always had my theory that um, UFOs could be us time traveling from the future, right? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a possibility, because if we ever get to the point where we develop time travel, then we would probably come back to points in time sure. where we're going through, and we would see Especially that. if, like, you know, like, 
shit's going real bad. It's going south. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they can come back well, to try thing, to correct it. One thing I've noticed is they appear a lot around like nuclear weapons, and that plus they were spotted a lot around. Um, what were? At UFOs. Oh. Like Hiroshima and stuff, where yeah. the bombs went off. Yeah. Yeah. So they're definitely they definitely show interest in, you know, what we do as far as war. And they don't seem to be yeah, cool. Yeah, because I'd probably them. like stop, man. You know what you're doing to your earth. I mean, the thing is, like, people like me and you and uh, want... our listeners, we're not the people that engage in wars or have anything to do with these wars. We're more or less bystanders, just like the people in yep. Ukraine. You know, exactly. and uh, we're gonna send that prayers out to them. Absolutely. Cause that's just terrible, man. Um, it's just people in power making people who have little suffer. Like their lives aren't aren't already hard enough, you know. Mhm. But yeah. Um, what about Andrew? What What they say you look like? Didn't they say something about they had like Joker like grins or something? What's that? Andrew Cole. Oh, uh, I, I don't. I don't know. I didn't. I see a description, and I don't. I don't know if. I, uh, let me see if I can find like where he encounters him. So, evidently, the Mothman, or a, myth, a winged creature, was seen uh, last year around well, Chicago really? at an international airport. Yeah. I mean, there have been other sightings of winged creatures. I know I've seen something mm -hmm. where um, this girl was uh, hiking up a pretty high mountain. Mm-hmm. And uh, she disappeared, and this dude was already up there hiking, and on his, he was on his way out or whatever. Okay. And on his way out, supposedly he sees this this thing uh -huh. in the sky that he described as big as like a dinosaur flying or whatever. Yeah. And uh, you know he seen the girl walking in when he was walking out, and then nobody ever seen her again. Oh, so, huh. That's kind of weird. I want to, I'd like to do an episode and talk a little bit about missing people too. Yeah. So, the person that saw it in um, Chicago said, I saw this was not some person, but some red-eyed creature and what appeared to be a coat were actually wings, which it spread out as it turned to look at me. So, the quote was taken from a witness. So, this was supposed to be? Last year, last February. Uh, or the they end say of it looked like a person with a coat. That's what he thought at first. So you, what, you but what he thought like, was a coat was actually wings. It spread them out. Like a fur coat? Yeah, so okay. it must have been large. You know what I mean? Right, it had the right, wings right. down and thought that it, the wings were like a coat. Okay. Until he spread them out. And realized like those, it's not a... Cause you, I mean, I could see how did that he, would be. Did he actually describe it as a mothman? I don't know. Let's just, let's see. It was a 17-year veteran of a U.S. Postal Service. Walked into her car after leaving work one night when she spotted a 7-foot tall, red-eyed creature striding towards her. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be kind She of stated that the figure then flew above her, emitting a screeching sound as she hurried to her car and drove away. The anonymous postal employee is not the first person to have reported seeing a tall winged man flying above. Sightings of this strange phenomena, phenomenon have been documented all around the world. Well, and then they want to talk about the Mothman. That's wild. Mm -hmm. There's some strange stuff out there, guys. If y'all are out, and you know, really out, I don't mean in the city, but I mean strange stuff happens in the city. But if you're out there and uh, these crazy places just... I'm sorry. It was fall of uh, 2020 at Chicago O'Hare Airport. That's pretty recent, though. Yeah. So you guys stay away. And if you have any stories you would like to share, we'll share them um, on one of our uh, videos. Just send them to us at hillshadowsky at yahoo.com. Mm -hmm. And we'd, we'd love to hear from you guys. And make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our stuff. We, uh... We always cover the unknown and paranormal, and we love talking about cryptids and 
all the yeah. supernatural stuff. We get it's off all, topic a bit, quite a bit. But. We do. But it's it's, <laughs> it's all, all generally the same yeah. thing, right? I mean, I mean I think you talk about one together. thing about it, and you can't sometimes can't help but right. it relate I mean, it to. The more you else. learn about each individual thing, the more you see like a lot of it has a lot in common yeah. with each other. So, I mean, if you're wanting to, oh, put, I said sometimes he makes clicking noises. I'm sorry, I'm just reading over here. That's wild. I think if you want to put an entire puzzle together and see the whole picture, you got to put all the pieces yeah. in there. So it's important to try to to link things Ooh, together and see sure. where things fit in and uh, place them in the appropriate places. But thanks for hanging out with us, guys. We yeah. hope you've enjoyed our eighth, eighth episode, right? I think so. It means we've been doing this for two months, so celebrate. Yay! Ah. <laughs> go us make sure you guys subscribe we need subscribers we're trying to grow a community here we want you guys to be a yeah, part of it share. So, Dude, yeah share yeah. the videos subscribe. hit the subscribe button comment on the videos we'll we'll gladly comment back we'll engage with you guys just uh become a part of that little uh supernatural and unknown community and and if you have any us. stories Send write them. them to us so i can read them Twice. Yeah, I'll have her share them by a campfire or whatever, you know, or we'll go somewhere cool. Yeah, because we should do some, like, actual video. But, right, yeah. You know, not I'm video. actually going to go down tonight and play newborn oh, yeah. baby sounds and record and see if I get anything. So maybe, uh, we actually watched this video last night, and I'm not, I don't want to say any names or anything like that, but. Why? You know, I mean, I'm, I guess I can. Yeah, I will. I will because I like this guy and I think he's. But what, a good I mean, dude. I thought maybe you were afraid for like, I, I don't know, like. I just want to remain like you know non-biased in any way. I guess. Oh, I like the dude. I do too. I wasn't sure how I felt okay, about first, but the okay. more I watched him, like. His name is <laughs> this dude's name is Jason Kinsey. People have probably already seen it. Same. Probably so. If you if you here. haven't, you should check it out. And, and give him a honestly, chance. Honestly, initially you'll it, think listen, he's, he's listen. kind of he's silly. <laughs> there but. are four. This guy's done four videos. Three. No four. It was chapter three. Well, no, he this made was done. four that we watched. Yes, it was four. We watched four. Okay. That's the one we watched last mm -hmm. night. But the first one, the first couple, really. He goes into he's he's stuck, he's looking for Bigfoot right. He's or a skeptic. Sasquatch. He's a skeptic, and he's a he's a real comedic like dude. He's yeah. got a really good sense of humor. He's a really good guy. I don't know him personally, but he seems like a really good dude. And he just kind of blows it off the first couple videos. Like makes jokes whatever. a lot about yeah, it. Like he don't really. Not I don't terrible, think he really but... believes it. And and honest to God, when you get to the fourth one. You can tell this dude is that. I mean, he has some he's amazing some kind of experience. evidence. Like he he's got some uh, audio of talking that, that is another language. It's you know. very similar to the Sierra sounds. Yeah, it, it's not as nearly as long, obviously. Or as like. But I mean, there's that. He gets wood what? knocks. He's he's getting whoops. And he at one point, he sees a silhouette that drops down to its knees and crawls away. Don't give. I'm just you saying, and I'm, and I'm not. You guys, I mean, you got to check it out. It's yeah, cool. it's good. I thought and, it was good. Um, it's not often that too many um, I'm just, documentaries I'm keep me I'm really captivated. impressed by it. But that I was did. really impressed. He really got, and one thing he did is, that's where I got the idea to play the uh, crying baby Yeah, now. right, right. Because he played it, and the responses he got, he immediately started getting wood knocks. I'm kind of nervous to go do it. I'm I'm intrigued to do it. We might catch some good stuff. You guys don't want to miss record it. Subscribe. Are you gonna record that. I'm gonna record it. Absolutely. Okay. And I will upload it. If so, anything happens. And uh, you know, if I don't get to, maybe you guys can come find the footage and upload it. <laughs> <laughs> might get you some found footage or something. But yeah, it's been fun. I think we're gonna roll out. It's been cool hanging out with you guys, and uh, we're gonna go make this little video. And yeah, we'll have, well, you know, you guys got this to listen to. We'll have this other video uploaded. Hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications when we do our uploads so you know when it's uploaded. And you guys uh, get in touch with us. Hillshadowsky at yahoo.com. I've been Jeremiah.
You've been? I have been, Jeremy. <laughs> I still am. And this is that. As far as I know. And we'll see you guys next time.